Hello, welcome back to More Talk. I'm your host, Cooper Moore, and I'm joined here today by the former school captain, study at Macquarie for Media Communications, Mr. Muscled, Sud Size, Lachlan Accord. Hello, it's it's an absolute pleasure, Cooper. I've never been more excited. <laughs> well, I find that hard to believe because I feel like you've had a quite an eventful life. Yeah, this is true. I've had a lot of stuff happen, but I just... This is a very professional setup. I've never... <laughs> I've been in real radio studios for countless hours, and this is... Very exciting and looking at all this. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Now, let's get straight to the point. Okay. Origin story. Now, who is Lachlan Court? Let's go from the beginning. Oh, my God. Well, what I do know, you want to know? Well, I want to know that, from my opinion, from what I see, you're into making films, whether that's, like, not direct, like a big film, but, like, you know, having short things and having kind of content based for certain reasons. And I know that you're a climate change activist in some part and all these different things. So I want to know what made that you. Um, oh, it's such a, a, a long story, I well, guess. Then I we've, don't got know. Time. we've got time. Um, I wouldn't say I am a filmmaker. I don't like I'd say I started studying at uni yeah. doing film. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, I don't like film. <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't describe myself in any way as film oriented why is that why when you said you don't like film what is that supposed to mean oh okay i probably don't like the theory okay that goes behind studying film i sense. didn't like doing all the like classes where they're like oh what's the color in this scene meaning i don't, it didn't really interest me yeah. i just sort of i don't know got bored of it i guess and yeah. then maybe that's that's a bit of a pretentious thing to say considering you you have to know all that to make good stuff yep but i didn't like it no 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 and then you switch over to podcasting yeah radio and podcasting that was what i changed to study and what i have graduated as doing and i like that a lot more probably because there was less theory involved yep. but also it's more fun and i like the people involved more was there a kind of a big risk when you said you were going to switch because i feel like when you go to uni you choose your media communications degree you kind of set on whatever major you're going for. So was there some kind of nerves with that? Uh, not nerves. I mean, there were probably nerves about do I, am I going to be able to do it? Because yeah. I switched after maybe what two and a half years yeah. doing, technically doing a film major, but I had done like one film class because I kept putting them off because I didn't want to do them. Um, so when I went to switch, it was, pretty straightforward but i think you know if i had waited a bit longer it might have been impossible to do with the way the the uni runs things absolutely right now uh your continuing with your origin story um let's go back in high school we'll take a, a trip down memory lane of course now a clear memory of mine is school captain lachlan the court mm. now in that position you did a lot of different activities initiatives and that and it was in your own personal flair mm -hmm. can you explain to me what your own personal flair is if you if you know yourself oh, i i hate talk, like analyzing myself but i'll try i'll try for you and for the sake of the more productions podcast <laughs> um i feel like i don't like to take things very seriously yeah or um it's it's more that i like to have fun yeah and i don't you know if things are too if people take themselves too seriously or take things too seriously then i get a bit bored of it or i just like lose interest with it so i never i always try and keep things interesting for other people so if we're talking about the stuff i did when i was school captain all those years ago that was wild forgotten ago. all about it cooper <laughs> um i you know at schools people will like run initiatives but they always go usually following the same formulas. And I, when I was captain, I was trying to, like, shake things up and make things interesting so people would actually pay attention and, and 
notice what was going on. So, for example, yeah. I'm sure you remember, we did one together where we were trying to collect old phones. Do you remember that? Oh, we've done a couple. But I remember okay. the old phones one, yeah. And I think my trick at that point when I was still trying to, if you want to put a label on it, figure out my own flair. <laughs> um, I was trying to come up with characters that would yep. represent whatever cause we were doing. And so we had a character for the old phones. I think I was the undertaker. I was collecting the dead phones and you were my son, Mortadella. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I completely forgot about all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and so we went around collecting all the dead phones, putting them in a grave, it was just a bucket. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I feel like that at least got more attention than a little announcement saying hey bring in your old phones if you want yeah of course and so that was the goal yeah making yeah. everything a little bit more in enjoyable sure yeah sure yeah i don't know i've never thought about it enough to put words def definitions behind yeah. anything yeah so through all these experiences mm. is the dead mobile phone thing like your favorite or was there like a key one that was like that was like you topped everything with that are we still talking when yeah. I was... Let's go school, school captain. I want to keep school captain. There. Okay. Um, from memory, and I'm sure there's stuff that I've forgotten that I've done, uh, I quite liked... I did something where I wanted people... Very similar to the old phone thing. I wanted people to bring in old clothes to donate to, yeah. like, charity bins. And so I came up with a character called the Clothes Goblin who <laughs> eats clothes. And I made an announcement saying, the Clothes Goblin, he's come to school. He's set up in the school office. The only way we can get rid of him is to feed him enough clothes that he gets too full and has to move away. Yeah. And um, I had a lot of fun just talking about the clothes goblin, coming up with his story and, and yeah. getting everyone involved with that. And I think that was probably quite successful, con successful yeah. considering how many clothes we got. I don't remember, probably like a few bags. Pretty Which good. Is, anything's better than nothing, really. Of course. And the clothes goblin, he, he got so full, he had to move away. <laughs> it Never came back. Now, y from just talking to you for like seven minutes on the podcast, you talk with such creativity and a way around how you speak and how you make stuff and all this kind of stuff. It's very original. Who is your inspiration? Oh, actually, this is something I've been thinking about. Okay. Not thinking about actively, but... I've always really liked Hamish and Andy. Yeah. Um, ever since I can remember, I've had their like CDs, listened to them, their radio show, podcast. Went to, I've met them a few times at like signings or things um, when I was quite young. And recently, I don't know if we can come touch on this at any point, but I've recently been overseas for like two months, very long time. And one of the things that I would do when I was overseas and like bored or just thought, ah. Oh, Home, home is good. Um, I would listen to Hamish and Andy, and I'd be like, "Wow, these they they they're very good." Yeah. And um, I've always probably subconsciously thought, one day, I'd love to get to do something like them, like just sort of go out and have fun and, and do things that excite me. Yeah. And I like um, I've heard them talk like outside of their show about their like philosophy and whatever, and it's very nice about like just making memories and doing things that interest you and following whatever like ideas come into your head and seeing where they go. I, don't, yeah. I like that. Yeah. And is that something in the future with your future goals? Like Hamish and Andy, the radio hosts, the presenters, they're just social people. Mm. Is that your goal in your life to be someone like that or something completely different? I'll be honest. I don't know if I have a clear goal. No. Um, and I don't know if they ever did either, to be fair. Yeah. Um, you'd have to ask them, get them on the podcast. One day. But, um, yeah, for now I'm just sort of doing things that interest me yeah. and excite me. So I guess I'll see wherever that leads me at the moment. Yeah. I don't really know. We'll find out. Um, your content and everything I've been watching, you have a very big connection with your friends. And I feel like mm. they're sometimes the butt of the joke, but other times they're just in for the journey. A couple of things. How do you convince them to do a lot of this crazy things? Mm-hmm. And the other one is, do they just like throw themselves at you and try and do these kind of things with you? Because they love the engagement with that. Um, well, first of all, friends, I never want to make them the butt of any joke. Of course not. Um, if 
it ever comes across that way. I'm sure I've checked with them. Anytime I have someone involved with like something I've made or anything, I usually try and show it to them before I like put it out into of the world course. and make sure they're all good with it. Yeah. Um, so I don't ever want to like be making fun of my friends. Um, how hard is it to get them involved? Um, it's easier now that they're a bit more used to it. When I was starting to make things and saying, hey, do you want to come and be involved with this? It was a bit harder to like convince people, hey, come along and do that. But like never impossible. There were always people that I knew that we were up it. for it. Yeah. But um, for example, I made a video like two or three years ago now where me and a bunch of my friends rode our bikes to the big bicycle. I remember I remember this video I watched. Yeah. It was like an it was like an eight minute video on your Instagram or something. I watched something it. Something like that. Yeah. They're all around the same length. Yeah. Um and in my head that I, idea was gonna be impossible to sell to anyone because who is gonna give up a whole day to ride their bikes to this statue of a bike that is literally out the front of like a tip. <laughs> it's not that an enjoyable of a day. But when I floated the idea, I just sent out a message to people and everyone responded, yeah, I'll do it, let's let's go. And uh, since then, I think I've realized, oh, people are pretty up for most of the ideas I've had. Usually, I'll just suggest something and people will go along with it if they're free and find it interesting, which hopefully they'll do you, continue. Do you have a creative process to try and figure out these ideas? Um not one written down or thought no. through in any way. Um, like usually if I'm making something or I want to make something, I'll have an idea and then I'll think it through and go, how is this going to come across? Because this is the one like philosophy that I have. I like to sort of tell stories, I guess, where you know you want to have like a narrative and like a, a through line with everything. So the original idea is, like, for example, if we're going ride your bike to the big bicycle that the only like story there is yeah we did it great yeah it's not it's a it's not really a climax or anything it's just yeah. getting there yeah so with that idea i pre-planned a few like moments that i knew would be interesting in the story so there's one point where we have all these energy gels to really like get us energized and keep riding and then uh it was actually quite fortunate unfortunate for the people that um, were involved but some of the bikes that we brought they had a lot of issues with them so the tire kept deflating the brakes weren't working a few things going wrong and i thought well, this is good for content the story. content yep. yeah um so anytime i've got an idea i need to try and be able to mold the story out of it and tell okay. something interesting out of it yeah now when did your media and content all this kind of stuff go from jokes with friends to actually having a, a meaning and then c continuation with the story. Cause I feel like you have like, you know, a fun joke about, you know, the athletics carnival. And then there's a bunch of your videos are about climate change and all this. Mm. So when did that light bulb hit for you? As in, when did I stop? When did you, when did you stop making content without purpose and then creating contact content with purpose? Oh, Cooper, I'd argue nothing I've made has any purpose. <laughs> Anything. It's, it's all just, you know, for me and, Having fun. If we're talking, I've made some videos about climate change. If that's what yeah. I get. okay. Um, the first time I did that was 2019. It was, or maybe the year before. I don't remember. Um, and I think it was around that time that I was like, oh, the climate change. That's 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 not a good thing. Yeah. And so I thought, well, you know, everyone can. Well, let's see. My opinions about it have changed, actually. Because okay. when I started, I was like, oh, we've all got to do something. We can't just sort of sit back and let it happen. And uh, sort of I still agree with that. But also, it's not, what if without going into it too much, what's happening is not our fault to, well, like, to some degree, I guess it is. But really, it's the institutions and everything that's sort of, we exist within this, like, society. Yeah. And it, everything that we do is sort of defined by that. So we can't help if the only options available to us are bad for the environment. Anyway, so when I started making these things, I was like, okay, well, i got to show people how they can live better. And now then I became more interested in it and I looked more deeply into like climate change and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. 
maybe there's more to it than just like turning off lights when we're not using them. And I thought, well, it's all a very big, complicated issue. And so I changed my tune to being, how can I like communicate this information in a very easy to understand, clear way, even if it's just to my friends? I wanted to sort of get the message across in the least patronizing and most easily digestible way possible. Yeah, and that's why you just created all these facts and all these kind of things and then made the content so people can actually access them. Is that, is that yeah. what you're saying? I tried to do that. I tried to get it like um, gradually as I've refined what's essentially the same video series that I've done like three times now. Yeah. They've gotten shorter and more to the point and I guess in a communicated in a way that is not really like saying, hey, this is your fault. You've got to do something to like, hey, this is what's going on. If you feel like learning more, this is where you can go. If you want to do anything, these are your options. But it's yeah. up to you. I'm not, I'm not saying it's your fault because it's not really. Yeah. Now, what are some projects that you are working on or have recently worked on that have just been, you know, great things that people have been enjoying? Uh, well, so I am working, volunteering for the radio station 2SER at the moment. And last year I started a segment called Tummy Treasures. <laughs> Okay. And that's been a lot of fun. Um, Explain to us what the, what's, what's Tummy Treasures. So Tummy Treasures is a like five, ten minute segment on the Tuesday drive show on 2SER where I go out and try and find the best food in Sydney. Yeah. And um, so it started as like, oh, these are the best pancakes in Sydney. This is the best hot chocolate in Sydney. And then I did that a few times and I thought, this is going to get a bit boring. So I've started doing celebrity Tummy Treasures where I get – very low level Sydney celebrities and I go up to them and say hey where's your favorite place to eat and then we go and try it together talk about it and I've done I think 10 or 11 episodes of Tummy Treasures and apparently it's been very well received by the two SCR listenerships and so I'm working on a few more episodes to come out in the near future that's pretty cool yeah what got you what got you to start doing that um so I started volunteering at two SCR just like behind the scenes producing stuff and then I was talking to the host of the show saying, hey, I've got this idea for an interview, but also, so my original idea, I just wanted to go to this one place because they were advertising they had the best chocolate cake in Sydney. And I thought, that's funny, but like doing an individual episode on that feels like an ad and yep. ads, it's tricky to do on community radio. Yep. So we turned it into a whole segment and I wanted to do something more hands-on and creative at the station anyway. So this is a good reason. So I went out and I just started making episodes and they started going there. Nice. And did you get this through um, finishing a degree and then or just a gateway to it or did you get it through something else? So uh, you have to do an internship as part of your degree. Okay. And my internship was at 2SER. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. And once that finished, I just sort of stuck around and I've been doing that for year and a half or so now yep and what is your future with that do you think you're going to continue with that uh, radio station and hopefully go into another role or uh I, yeah maybe i don't know it's it's tough to say with stuff like well if we're using 2SER an example i don't know because i'm not very involved with like how the station is run or like, of course. i'm like very 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 low level i know like four people there um so i don't know what the possible future would be but you yeah. know in a dream world yeah i'd love to be involved more and do more stuff now let's look, looking in your f uh recent future traveling mm. explain to us why and how was it oh it was great um why because i wanted to i guess i've never been over well i had never been overseas before and i don't know i've always wanted to i guess and yeah. so it, actually i was gonna go 2020 but I, ju I just changed my mind i didn't feel like it there were no other external factors no about. nothing like that no, no. <laughs> just thought not the time and so it got pushed back and gave me more time to sort of think about where i wanted to go yeah and i have a friend in the in barcelona basically yeah in spain and I wanted to go and meet her. And at the same time that I met her, I was starting to learn Spanish. And so 
I've been speaking, practicing learning Spanish for four years now. I think you have to give uh, give us a sentence. I think. What do you want me to say? Whatever you think, because uh, I won't understand it anyway. So whatever okay. you think. Uh, escucha la podcast. That's very basic. What is that? What is that one? Listen to the podcast. See, okay. you heard that first, guys. Thank you very much. I, mean, that. I don't know. Maybe there's a Spanish word for podcast that I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've been learning Spanish, and I thought, great, I'll go to Spain. I'll see my friend Maria. Yep. I'll speak Spanish. And then because I had more time to, like, plan, I added on a few countries. I got some of my friends to come and meet me at different points. Yep. It was a good good fun. Good, good fun. Good fun time. And was it a more of a convincing your friends, or was it just they just wanted to go for a holiday with you or travel? Well, initially... See, back when I was originally planning to go, it was very hard to convince anyone to come. Really? Because no one has time or money, Cooper. Uh, yeah, no one has time or money. But um, now that I had like a year, two years to like think about where I actually wanted to go and try to convince people, it was a bit easier. So yeah. I had three friends come and meet me at different points and it was uh, it was very fun. Who, who are these three friends? So my friend Shen, yeah. he came with me. Yeah. Um, we flew together. London, and then we went around a bit of Spain, and yep. then my other friends, Praveen and Raveen. Yeah, Praveen and Raveen. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Raveen actually has a younger brother called Praveen as well. <laughs> it's very funny. Um, <laughs> they met me in Portugal, and we went around Portugal and a tiny bit of Spain again together. Nice. Um, so did you say Shen? Is that right? Shannon. Shannon. Now, is this the same person that you? Forced a date with in one of your famous videos? Yes, the very can, same. Can you explain to the viewers what happened and what your goal was for that particular video? So, at one point, I made a video where I... The, the only goal of the video was to try and get a date for my friend Shannon, who had never been on a date before. Yeah. That was all I wanted to do. Um, because I saw in another video that about the helicopter and you travelling around a helicopter, and then that happened. But I want, you, I want everyone to know what exactly happened before. Okay. So if you watch the video, you will get this in a much clearer way. But we tried a lot of different methods to get Shannon a date. Didn't work. And then we got a text from someone that we didn't know saying, hey, are you still trying to find a date for your friend? And I said, yes, I am. And so we organized this date with these strangers, set them up, Shannon and this other girl. They went out to dinner. Great. And uh, it's been two years nearly since that and they are still together wow yeah. is that do you feel a little bit of uh what's the right word uh, i want to say joy but like mm. entitlement yep yep do you feel from from that relationship staying together very much so it's all because of me they owe me everything they have <laughs> that's what i say credit you deserve all the credit for that yeah now what made you thought about that idea because i know you said you wanted to get your friend a date but mm -hmm. like I'm sure there was other methods of trying that instead of making a video. No. No, there wasn't. I think I had just seen um, a similar video. There are probably like hundreds of videos with the same premise. Uh, and I thought that'd be funny to do with Shannon. Yeah. So I wanted to do that. And then it worked out. So 100% success rate. <laughs> now, I want to know about your connection to a certain holiday because I feel like a lot of your content comes from the certain holiday. Mm. Christmas. Christmas. Love Christmas. Christmas. You love Christmas. Yeah. I know you do. Why do you love Christmas? Ah, I don't know. I've never really thought about it beyond that. I like it. Um, I guess it's the most, like, you can get the most out of it. Uh, everyone takes Christmas as, like, the, the king of the holidays. Yeah, I agree. You know, Easter, great. But the, the hype for Christmas, it's a whole month. Yeah. And there are, like, dedicated Christmas events, and I just really enjoy it. And all the, I think I just uh, enjoy a lot of the stuff around it a lot, probably because there's a lot of excuses to do things. Like, uh, every Christmas I, like, organize different things with my friends. We do, like, night picnics where we have, like, like a picnic dinner thing, and then as the sun goes down, we go and look at all the Christmas lights nearby. Yeah. And make a Christmas song every year with my friend Seb. Just do a lot of Christmas stuff. Is this the same Seb that you do review the... Is it, say it again. I can't <laughs> pronounce it. Reviewer-roos? reviewer uh, I think reviewer is, is probably dead now. But yeah, we did used to do a series together where we would review things together. Yeah, and that started a, a while ago. That was during school, wasn't it? Yeah, that was like 2014 or something. I was like 
not that old. Yeah. And what was the purpose of that? Like, I know you said you review stuff, but mm-hmm. like, what was the idea click? What made you both go, yep, yeah, we should do this? I think um, originally we made just a one-off video where we were reviewing different Easter eggs because we thought it would be funny and we saw them on sale. And so we just bought a bunch and we just filmed it in like one afternoon. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, that was pretty good. We should do more of that. And so we came up with like a title for it and we would just pick things to review. We wouldn't really review them that much. It was mo- mostly just an excuse for me to make fun of Seth. Nice. Um, at that point, he was the butt of the joke. But I, I've changed my tune now. I don't, I don't really... You don't, you don't want to do that anymore? No. And I don't even know if those videos are still up, really. But... Um, no, actually, I haven't checked that. No. <laughs> um, and you said you make Christmas music with Seb. Yes. Talk to me about that. How, and how, how is that going? Um, it's going great. He is a musician. He's studying... Well, he finished studying music and musical theatre and stuff. He's in a band, he's writing his own, so- own songs, and so he's always, like, made stuff. And I love the idea of being able to make music, but I have no idea how to play any instruments or if you hear any of the songs. I don't know how to sing. <laughs> um, so I just go up to Seb whenever I feel like doing something musical. I say, hey, you figure this out, and when you're ready, I'll come and take most of the credit for it by singing over it and posting it on on my accounts nice i like that yeah now why do you do all these kind of things why do you make all this kind of content big picture question God, i've been asking myself that for years i don't know um i guess there must be some element of me enjoying it i like getting to make things um there's like a lot of stuff that i make and that i do that like i don't like put out like i write like a I want to say monthly, but it's probably less regular than that. Like a little newspaper newsletter thing that I mail out to my friends and like include little stories about my life and things that I'm thinking for them. That's funny as, yeah. yeah. I, I like write, that. I make little quizzes that we do sometimes, all, all these different events, uh, and it's just, just for me. So I guess um, I am trying now to – I think I probably went through a period where I was like, I like to make things, and the natural like – progression from that was you know you got to put stuff out there you make something you got to share it yeah but that then that got exhausting i think because in my head it was like even though i had no level of success cooper and i still don't um i was like oh my god it's so exhausting the demands of having to make something regularly but i was just putting those sort of expectations on myself i didn't really need to make anything yeah i was just doing it because i enjoyed it and so in more recent years, I'm realizing I can just do stuff when I feel like it because I feel like it. I don't need to have any reason beyond that to do something. Of course. Lachlan. Cooper. What makes you happy? You do. Oh, stop Actually, stop it. On that. On that. I still have, I don't know if you've mentioned this on the podcast, but have you told everyone about makes me happy? Oh, God. You really had to bring... <laughs> I actually never mentioned it makes me happy. Well, now's the time. This is going to be a great reel. <laughs> Um, makes me happy was my first ever clothing brand and accessory brand. I made it in year six and I kept it in year seven to eight, I think. And Lachlan was probably one of my first buyers and he bought a pencil case from me. And you're about to say you started the pencil I case. I still have it. I use it to keep all my USBs together. <laughs> it's great. That's probably the only remnants of that brand. Just, you don't even have any? I've got a couple of shirts because I feel bad throwing them out. Of course. But just... When you <laughs> making a clothing brand is tough, mm. and it's just so much competition, especially when your designs are an emoji with blue and camouflage on it. Like, it was a great emoji though. <laughs> what What was the reason behind the brand? I don't think I ever asked you this. Um, I wanted to do something with purpose, and I wanted to start now so that I could fail at it or succeed at it. Because wow. if you don't like, one thing I always said to myself is that if you try after high school, you only try after you get your degree, you only try when there's a reason and you fail, you wasted all that time. Whereas if you fail while you can still fail, then you learn from that. I've done that. I failed with Makes Me Happy. I failed with Euphro. That's like another clothing thing I did. I failed with Stand Up Starfish. I failed with the cooking thing. But now I've got here. So it's just, you know, 
just mm. it's it's a philosophy. It's you know you fail and fail until you find something that actually works a bit. And so you think if you did all that stuff after you graduated uni or whatever, it would have been a waste. Absolutely right. Because yeah. the first that like makes me happy was a clothing brand that had a big emoji on it. Wasn't even copyright. I saw that from Twitter, so I would have had a copyright lawsuit with me. And it was just like the product was like bad quality. I learned that, so then I made the next edition, which is supposed to be actual proper good looking clothing, which I made myself. And that worked well. It's just, you know, it took really tough because when you make clothing yourself, it puts the energy off from you and people don't buy it. And so and then I realized I'm not going to do clothing. And then I did podcasting. And then I realized when I first did my podcast with stand up stuff, you know, with the boys, it was a lot of swearing, a lot of rep- repetition and too many people talking at the same time. No one wanted to listen to it. So we failed with that. And then we, one of my English teachers said to me, he said, you should make something about people's pipe dream, people's dreams. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I like that. And then I thought, well, why don't I just have a podcast and I talk to people and talk about their dreams? So, you know, it's just a, a leveling up of that. You're learning from every... I'm learning from every failure. That's beautiful. And now look at you already. Getting there. We're getting there. We've got, you know, stuff. People people like to hate comment, but that's okay. Hey, hate comment means more views. Exactly. Algorithm. And, you know, if you ever fail at this, you move on, you get even better at that. Do something else afterwards, yeah. Exactly. That's the goal. That's a nice little mindset to have. <laughs> now, we're going to move back to conversation to you. Okay. Okay? Now, I, I, I know I asked you what makes you happy, but... You, it can't just be me. What else makes you happy? Um, this is another... You're asking me questions I've never thought about before. That's the whole point of the podcast. Okay. Uh, what does make me happy? I guess um, my friends and getting to do things with them. Um, what else? There's got to be something. Like all of my favorite things, favorite movies, it, have a guess. Favorite movie? Yeah. Oh. No, this is tough because I haven't talked to you for a long time and I like, hmm. I don't know. I'm trying I, I literally. What's your, what's your favorite movie? Uh, Walter Mitty. That's a good movie. Or Chef with John Favreau in that. Oh, Have you seen that? that? It's a good movie. Uh, I'll, I'll just tell you, my favorite movie is Paddington. Paddington Bear? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. That's such, that's such a good movie as well. It's a beautiful movie. Yeah. Both of them. You like both? Of course. I don't really... Everyone says the second one's better than the first one. I don't really have a favourite. I like them both. Yeah. Um, so there's got to be something in that. I'm not sure what it is. I haven't interrogated it enough to know what sort of qualities are represented by Paddington. But I really like Paddington and doing things. I think I like engaging with other people. That sounds wrong. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, it's the... I'm trying to think of the word for you as well. It's... Connection. Connection. Oh. Networking. No, not networking. No, not networking. Networking has this whole... Uh, th- like, the idea of networking is there's an ulterior motive. You don't want to go around... Okay, yeah. Just, just like, meeting people and having fun with them. Yeah. But, you know, that's also the same answer that a seven-year-old would give. So, I don't know. There's nothing bad with that. No, not at all. Now, another very deep question that's going to trigger every follicle of your brain. Mm-hmm. What's the purpose of life? Oh, my God. What's your purpose and what's the purpose? My purpose. Your purpose. Um, I, I guess just to, well, I was going to say make other people happy, but then that's not necessarily true. I like, there's an element of, um, happiness and fun like do things that interest me and make me make me happy um, and I guess you know that's that's not a bad purpose to have because you know purpose of life you can't just like work and that that be your life yeah I feel like you got to do stuff to Enrich yourself. Yeah. And I think whatever that means for you, and it'll ch- it changes over time, you know. At one point, you really 
liked making clothes with little emojis on them, and now you like interviewing people, making a podcast. You're, what interests you and what makes you happy has changed, and I maybe that's the purpose of life, just finding something that interests you and makes you happy and doing that. Yeah, that's very that's a very good answer with it. Thank you. Well, with that, we're going to end the podcast today. Oh, so soon. So soon. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining the podcast today. Thank you very much, Cooper. I just want to say one thing without being a little cheesier, all right? Okay. Lachlan LaCourt is probably the one person that's inspired me to do a lot of my things. What? No, but like when he was school captain, I don't know why, but he's a random, he randomly chose me to be like his little kid, Mortadella, uh-huh. and like his like sidekick. And I was like, I'm going to be school captain just so I can tell Lachlan that I got school captain. And then when I was choosing what unis i said lachlan what do you do what what can i do from learning from what you do and he's always been a very big support so i just want to say thank you very much for that